everyone, and welcome to Sunday School at Redeemer Evangelical Lutheran Church in the Bronx, New York. We are a parish of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, where God's people pray. Let us review our mission statement together. Redeemer Evangelical Lutheran Church, by God's grace, is a praying community of service that receives, teaches, celebrates, and shares Christ Jesus. For Sunday School, our theme continues to be growing in grace and learning more. Thankful to God for his gifts and mercy then, let us call upon him together as we take our right hands and put them on our foreheads, making the sign of the Holy Cross and saying, in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's talk to our Lord now in prayer by folding our hands to remember that Jesus holds our hands and bowing our heads because Jesus is our King and closing our eyes to focus on Jesus as we speak to him in prayer. Repeat after Pastor. Dear Jesus, thank you for bringing us together. Open our ears and open our hearts to your holy word. In your name we pray, amen. Let us see where we are in the church's year. Today is the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. The 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Thankful to our Lord for all his gifts, let us hear from our Lord in his holy word, the Holy Bible. Today, we have a chance to hear God's holy word from the book of Exodus. Are you able to say Exodus? Let's try that again. Exodus. Beautiful. That name Exodus means way out. This is the story about how God led his children out of slavery to the land of freedom and peace. 
Let's hear about it here. The whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would not we have died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, whom we sat by with the meat pots and ate bread to the full? For you have brought us into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, at evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it is. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The Word of the Lord. God's Word tells us that the people were grumbling against Moses. Do you know how to grumble? Arr! Maybe it's like this. Hmm. Or maybe it's just like this. Whatever kind of grumble you have, Maybe you could share your grumble right now. Woo! Now, that's a grumble. The grumbling happened because they were upset. They felt that maybe Moses had led them in the wilderness just to die. Kind of stupid, don't you think? But that's what happens when God's people don't listen to God's voice, when they ignore his holy word, when they don't go to Sunday school, and they don't go to church. That's what happens. They miss out about what God's saying. And as a result, they started grumbling. Put on your grumble face. Grumble against Moses and against Aaron. They said, we're going to be out here to die. But God told them something different. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, you tell them, come out every day and gather a portion every day of food on the ground. And on the sixth day, gather a double portion so that the seventh day you can rest. And that way people will know that it was the Lord. Moses made it clear that the people were grumbling, not against Moses and Aaron, but their issue was with God. And even there, God was still gracious to them because when the evening came and God said he heard the grumbling of the people, he said, at twilight you shall eat meat in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quail came and covered the entire camp. Quail would be a kind of bird that they could eat. And in the morning, dew lay on the camp, and it was a frost-like flaky substance. And the people said, what is it? And you know what that is in Hebrew? Mana. Mana. Can you say mana? Mana, that's right. 
They did not know what it was. They said, what is this? And Moses said, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. The Lord gives bread from heaven. He gave bread to the children of Israel 40 years in the wilderness. Every day the Lord was providing for them. All of it was pointing to the time when Jesus would come and when Jesus would give himself as bread for the world. He says, I am the bread of life. You who come to me will never be hungry. Every word that came out of Jesus' mouth, bread indeed it was for their souls and hearts and lives. That same Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread into his sacred hands. He gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Jesus, in the Holy Eucharist, gives us his bread of life. He provides for us our every need. Jesus did that as he was preparing to go to the cross to suffer and die for all our sin. And on the third day he rose again. That Jesus provides bread for God's children. Through the Holy Word and Blessed Sacraments, we're baptized into Jesus' death and resurrection. We eat his body and drink his blood. We become what we receive. And now the world says, what is it? And we say, it is the bread come down from heaven. It is God's provision for us. How excited we can be to receive it. We receive daily bread as God provides everything that we need. And we receive the bread of life as we receive Holy Communion. A number of you already receive Holy Communion. A number of you are preparing to receive Holy Communion. We hope that you will receive Jesus' most precious body and blood soon. Come to God's house. Come and receive that gift. Come and celebrate God's goodness and provision for all of us. Though we grumble and complain about how bad we have it, God is good and merciful and gracious, and he continues to give us his daily bread every single day. Give us this day our daily bread. We pray in the Lord's Prayer, and the Lord hears it. And on the last day when Jesus comes back in glory and raises us up, we shall feast at his banquet where his provision will never, ever end. Thankful to the Lord for the bread of life, thankful for his gifts every day. Let us call upon him now in prayer. As together we fold our hands to remember that Jesus holds our hands. As we bow our heads because Jesus is our king and close our eyes to focus on Jesus as we speak to him in prayer. Repeat after pastor. Dear Jesus, thank you for giving us food in the wilderness. Help us to be grateful for all your gifts. Send us your spirit so that we may desire the bread of life. In your name we pray. Amen. Shalom, my friends, shalom, my friends, shalom, shalom. My peace be with you, my peace be with you, shalom, shalom. Shalom, my friends, shalom, my friends, shalom, shalom. My peace be with you, my peace be with you, shalom, shalom. Shalom, my friends, shalom, my friends, shalom, shalom. My peace be with you, my peace be with you, shalom, shalom. Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In my life, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In my life, Lord, be glorified today. Be glorified in your church, Lord. Be glorified today in my home, Lord. Be glorified, be glorified in my home. today in my school Lord be glorified be glorified in my school Lord be glorified today Be glorified in my life, Lord. Be glorified today. And now together, let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty be upon you and remain with you forever. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. See how we